and it can cause rheumatoid arthritis or any type of arthritis and it causes that burnout within that first year to three years you don't want that so you can use the rhino tool on any person's feet even somebody who doesn't want sports massage nine out of ten times their feet are going to want some sort of deep tissue so using your elbow yeah it's great in here but sometimes you don't know how hard you're going but with this you can so instead of doing your thumb strips do your thumb glides individually nice and slow you know do your slow-mo less is best so I'm just showing you from an angle of I'm um, at a kneeling position you want to save your back or if you're in a massage chair you know rest your muscles while you can put your thumb in front of the it's just a bracer so you pretty much but if you're an advanced or expert just move your thumb individually glide Now, a lot of times when you're doing this, the rhino's horn is going to come up and want to slip off. It's going to want to do a jump. Put the bracer up here, almost like lock your arms around it, but you're not. It's just you know where you're going. And it won't slide off because you already have a nice little barrier. And that heel, for any woman, it gets hard. it's rough. It gets hard. So you're pretty much just breaking up that roughness. And then when they get a manicure or pedicure, it's just that easier for that dead skin to rub off because you just woke up that dead skin underneath that new skin's gonna rise up because you broke up all this hardness and you have a nice pedicure so I'm gonna show you my angles from standing up it's a lot easier so you're standing up you do your fierce punch remember you brace the ankle come underneath and glide so you can do your rocking and it feels great all the way down to the toes on top of the toes so right the toes are here so I'm right on top of them so the arch I turn to the side and get right on in there For plantar fasciitis, this is perfect. Right in the middle, see how it's moving all that fascia, skin, and muscle? Right in the middle. Move right on down. So plantar fasciitis is a painful condition to where that ligament, the foot ligaments, they get split right in the middle. So even stepping, even on this middle part, or they can break back here where the calcaneal tendon reaches back here into your Achilles tendon. So while this Achilles tendon is moving up, if you try to step on your toes or tippy toes, this is stretching and it's very painful. So this tool, you dig right on in there. So all I did was turn to the side, rest it on the table, and get right on in there without using any strength. It's nice and easy. No worries. You do some turns and twists. So all I'm doing is working the middle area and the back of the heel at the same time. So I'm going to turn the foot to the side a little bit. So this knuckle is down while this is touching here. So I'm doing both at the same time. All right. All right, so now we're going to work the calf area. And we're going to see how working the soleus can be a little bit easier to work instead of using your forearm or elbow. The elbow can be too much for the soleus, especially the gastroc that's on top. You're ripping muscle fibers just to get to the soleus, but you need your soleus to be stretched out and working properly so your gastrocs don't have to work as hard. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So first, you know, you normally start off with a nice warm up with the leg, come on in with the tool. So your Achilles heel is here. So what I like to use is right in between this knuckle, it's like a little hump, go right in between the hump. And that's where you start off, if it's right perfect for that groove. Not too hard, just go nice and slow. How we doing, Autumn? And see how the skin is buckling? I don't, I'm not using any type of pressure but my own body weight pretty much moving forward. So now once you want to do harder work or deeper work, stand up. You cradle the leg right underneath the ankle, or if you have a pillow, it'd be nice. I'm 
pressure. So now you're going to turn your tool this way, vertical, and do your individual glides. And anytime the stroke goes vertical, it's less pressure. If you're doing all fours this way, it's definitely going to be uh, the heavier setting, like more like a, a fierce setting. So you got your fierce, medium, and then the light punch, just like your Street Fighter back in the day. So you start off with your light punch, go to your medium, and then go to your fierce punch or heavy punch. So I started off with light and then fierce. You don't have to. You can work to all three levels. Now, when you scoop up, so now I'm scooping upward, it's even deeper because you're getting that last knuckle right on in between the soleus. So say we're going, we're gliding, we're gliding, we're gliding. And then I turn up and get in that soleus. Sometimes this is only pressure that some clients can take. If they can take deeper pressure, use the horn, the rhino's horn. Remember, you can use the pool cube method, your thumb right behind it, and really dig in there. And that's where you get the soleus, right in the middle. Without affecting the gastric venous, you are golden. So see how the skin just soups or sucks right on in, that's because the, the tool is pushing in at the same time, those muscles are relaxing, the gastrocs are, and the soleus is getting in. Very nice. So yeah, not your ankles, but your Achilles, around the side of the Achilles, the rhino will touch the table, come on in, and you're just using the table as a brace. You're just doing side movements. Stripping that gastric, the lower part of it, into the Achilles tendon. If you've been standing a long time and you have a stressful job when you're in, a, you're in those high heels and you definitely need some sort of stripping right around the feet, this is what you would need. A lot of weight bearing ligaments are right here. Everything else is bigger, thick muscles, hamstrings, gastroc, but your feet and your ankles, they're small. So pretty much this area needs more work than anything. So that's why you would strip nice and slow. Oh, so All right, so we're gonna work the arm. We have a lot of clients who have a lot of built up muscle tension or adhesions that are just really, really deep, thick knots and you wanna get those kinks and knots out of your client's arms from repetitive strain or repetitive motion or working out just too much. So to dig into those arms without using your elbows or your, your fist, sometimes using your fist and your forearms and everything, it's great for that first client, maybe the second client. The third client, you're gonna start feeling it. And the fourth and fifth, you're gonna be tired your hands are going to start to ache and spasm. So to prevent that spasm, you take your rhino. And I'm in a kneeling position. You don't have to be, so I'll stand up. Just glide on the outside of that arm. And remember, slow, slow, slow movements. This is no joke. This was designed for your IT band and deep, thick fascia that can't be alleviated or moved with just your elbow or fingers. So when you're gliding against their skin, just use caution. And this is for that supreme clientele who have thick, big muscles, or even if they're skinny and they're in shape where they need a lot of deep tissue work, they're gonna keep asking you for more and more deep tissue. You know who those clients are. So give them what they need, but just don't send them screaming off your table.
So see how the skin rolls like that? You're not gonna get that with your fingers or an elbow because it'll be too deep and it hurts. That's bone on bone. This is not a bone, it's rubber. So once it goes on the skin, it's like it's bouncing back off the skin, but the client does feel it, so don't go too deep. So when you have the client's arm abducted, all you need is a little bit of a lotion. If you put a lot of lotion, you're gonna be sliding everywhere and you can cause pain. So less is best. Just a little bit of lotion. Inside the arm, you can just do some nice circling. Just to warm the arm up. And some people like their arms beat up. So this is what you just come on in and start doing some rocking or individual stripping for their muscles. Because you have that biceps, you know, the big head, the small head. The bigger biceps on top, the smaller one right in the middle where it breaks. So shake the arm, get the tool going. And that's it. There's so many things you can do with this. This is just an overview. All right, so for our female and male therapists who love colors or you just want a pink rhino massage tool, this is a great gift to have uh, during your sporting events. They're gonna wonder what is that tool that you're using? What's going on with that table over there? I wanna go see that therapist just because you have this in your hand. So it's pretty much just a different color. It's pink. You use it pretty much in the same way. Gliding up and down. Getting those muscles. And remember, I would not use this on the regular client. Only if they want deep tissue or they're getting tired of the same old massage routine. This is built for a sports massage or someone who's been into a very bad car accident. And their muscles and their tendons, they've been resting for about a couple months and their body hasn't moved around. Uh, QL issues, your quadratus lumborum, it's hard to reach with just your fingertips. This is perfect for it. It'll guarantee you to get down there and break up those muscles. So definitely only do it on those type of clients. Anybody else, just make sure it's cool with them and they can take the pressure. Just putting this on someone's skin is pretty rough, but it's perfect for those clients who need that rough touch. Instead of breaking your wrists and breaking your hands, which all massage therapists know in the first couple months, if not a year, you're doing so much good work, it's gonna to start to affect your hands and affect your performance. And it's gonna cause burnout in the first five years, if not three. Uh, it's gonna cause you to quit or move on to something else, um, pretty much losing your love for your passion for massage. So remember, the pink one, it's just colorful. It's pretty much something that's eye-catching. You want your clients to have the best, so this is what you're gonna give them. And this string is designed so when you have your lotion bottle on your hip, it just go right on your hip so you don't lose it. we are and it's the pink rhino
All right, so you just got home, hard day's work, your feet are killing you, you wore high heels all day, and you're about to go out and do some more things, run and activities. So a lot of athletes get muscle strain right in here at their arch. So when you're working this area, it could be hard on your thumbs trying to do all this stripping. Your thumb joints or ligaments, they wear out over time and it can cause rheumatoid arthritis or any type of arthritis. And it causes that burnout within that first year to three years. You don't want that. So you can use the Rhino tool on any person's feet, even somebody who doesn't want sports massage. Nine out of 10 times their feet are gonna want some sort of deep tissue. So using your elbow, yeah, it's great in here, but sometimes you don't know how hard you're going, but with this you can. So instead of doing your thumb strips, do your thumb glides individually, nice and slow. You know, do your slow-mo, less is best. So I'm just showing you from an angle of, I'm um, at a kneeling position, you wanna save your back, or if you're in a massage chair, you know, rest your muscles while you can. Put your thumb in front of the, it's just a bracer, so you pretty much, but if you're an advanced or expert, just move your thumb, individually glide. Now, a lot of times when you're doing this, the rhino's horn is gonna come up and wanna slip off. It's gonna wanna do a jump. Put your bracer up here, almost like lock your arms around it, but you're not, it's just, you know where you're going. And it won't slide off, because you already have a nice little barrier. And that heel, for any woman, it gets it's rough, it gets hard. So you're pretty much just breaking up that roughness. And then when they get a manicure or pedicure, it's just that easier for that dead skin to rub off. Because you just woke up that dead skin underneath. That new skin's going to rise up because you broke up all this hardness and you have a nice pedicure. So I'm going to show you my angles from standing up. It's a lot easier. So you're standing up. You do your fierce punch. Remember, you brace the ankle, come underneath. And glide. So you can do your rocking. And it feels great. All the way down to the toes. On top of the toes. So right the toes are here, so I'm right on top of them. So the arch, I turn to the side and get right on in there. For plantar fasciitis, this is perfect. Right in the middle, see how it's moving all that fascia, skin and muscle? Right in the middle, move right on down. So plantar fasciitis is a painful condition to where that ligament, the foot ligaments, they get split right in the middle. So even stepping, even on this middle part, or they can break back here where the calcaneal tendon reaches back here into your Achilles tendon. So while this Achilles tendon is moving up, if you try to step on your toes or tippy toes, this is stretching and it's very painful. So this tool, you dig right on in there. So all I did was turn to the side, rest it on the table, and get right on in there. Without using any strength, it's nice and easy. No worries. We'll do some turns and twists. So all I'm doing is working the middle area and the back of the heel at the same time. So I'm gonna turn the foot to the side a little bit. So this knuckle is down while this is touching here. So I'm doing both at the same time. All right, so now we're gonna work the calf area and we're gonna see how working the soleus can be a little bit easier to work instead of using your forearm or elbow. The elbow can be too much for the soleus, especially the gastroc that's on top. You're ripping muscle fibers just to get to the soleus, but you need your soleus to be stretched out and working properly so your gastrocs don't have to work as hard. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So first, you know, you normally start off with a nice warm up with the leg, come on in with the tool. So your Achilles heel is here. So what I like to use is right in between this knuckle, it's like a little hump, go right in between the hump, and that's where you start off. It fits right perfect for that groove. Not too hard, just go nice and slow. How we doing, Autumn? Good. 
and see how the skin is buckling. I don't, I'm not using any type of pressure but my own body weight pretty much moving forward. So now once you want to do harder work or deeper work, stand up. You cradle the leg right underneath the ankle or if you have a pillow, be nice. Too much pressure. So now you're going to turn your tool this way, vertical, and then your individual glides. And anytime the stroke goes vertical, it's less pressure. If you're doing all fours, this way is definitely going to be uh, the heavier setting, like more like a, a fierce setting. So you got your fierce, medium, and then the light punch, just like your Street Fighter back in the day. So you start off with your light punch, go to your medium, and then go to your fierce punch or heavy punch. So I started off with light and then fierce. You don't have to. You can work to all three levels. Now, when you scoop up, so now I'm scooping upward, it's even deeper because you're getting that last knuckle right on in between the soleus. So say we're going, we're gliding, we're gliding, we're gliding. And then I turn up and get in that soleus. Sometimes this is only pressure that some clients can take. If they can take deeper pressure, use the horn, the rhino's horn. Remember, you can use the pool cube method, your thumb right behind it, and really dig in there. And that's where you get the soleus, right in the middle. Without affecting the gastric medius, you are golden. So see how the skin just soups or sucks right on in, that's because the, the tool is pushing in at the same time, those muscles are relaxing, the gastrocs are, and the soleus is getting in. Very nice. So yeah, not your ankles, but your Achilles, around the side of the Achilles, the rhino will touch the table, come on in, and you're just using the table as a brace. You're just doing side movements. Stripping that gastric, the lower part of it, into the Achilles tendon. If you've been standing a long time and you have a stressful job when you're in, a, you're in those high heels and you definitely need some sort of stripping right around the feet, this is what you would need. A lot of weight bearing ligaments are right here. Everything else is bigger, thick muscles, hamstrings, gastroc, but your feet and your ankles, they're small. So pretty much this area needs more work than anything. So that's why you would strip nice and